Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a reading for my Virgos. Let's see what the next 72 hours has in store for you. I'm going to be doing a full on spread for you guys with the original tarot. I'm even going to flip the camera down so you guys can actually see the cards that I have laid out. Okay. And let me know in the comments if you actually like this way where I flip the camera down so you guys can actually see it or if you guys love to see my face here on camera. But any information you need will be below if you want a personal check out the description if you would also like to see future readings or to see my live shows where i take personal reading questions i usually do it around like 7 30 8 p.m eastern standard time hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified okay but let's jump straight in virgos let's put the camera down okay let's move this over just a little bit so what does the next 72 hours have in store for my Virgos? Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus Placement. What does the next 72 hours have in store? Virgos. What does the next 72 hours have in store? Okay. So the situation, we have the strength card. So there could be a Leo of importance here, okay? But with the strength card energy just showing up, this could be you trying your best not to react in the heat of the moment. You could have certain things that could be just a little triggering um, or little irritations and whatnot. And keeping your cool or being aware of how you're responding or acting in the heat of the moment is going to be very important. Also, ego could be a big theme over the next 72 hours. Either you could be in your ego a little bit and how you're responding to what's going on with a romantic situation, a job situation, a family situation, or vice versa. You could have somebody outside of you who could be, again, really testing your patience or being very hard to work with because of the fact that they're consumed in their ego. I also have the Ace of Swords and the Empress. So you could be coming to a clear understanding with the person you may have children with. This could be an understanding that maybe you guys are not going to ever be on the same page. And maybe you guys need to just kind of have communication strictly for the children and just leaving it there. This could also be an understanding where, again, this person could be caught up in their ego and it's just going to be what it's going to be. Especially if there's issues that can't be resolved because it's too much of a focus on what happened. It just may be best for you to give this person some space. Now, what I'm also seeing, you could feel a lot more determined and focused, especially with this Ace of Swords energy, to stick to plans, stick to whatever strategy you have to get your finances in order or to experience more abundant things out of life, okay? Now let's talk about love. We got the seven of pinnacles. We have the sun card and we also have the four of pinnacles. So in your love life for my singles, I want to start there. You could be evaluating everything that you've pretty much experienced in your love life and having maybe moments of, you know, reminiscing or just trying to make sense of where you're at now in the grand scheme of things, right? And my singles, you could be realizing that you are very closed off to connecting to new people or opening yourself up. And this could be something that's really holding you back. You could actually be finding happiness in being single. And although this is a good thing, this is actually a really, really good thing. It could be a bad thing <laughs> if you get too comfortable in being single. Because then now it's like you're too scared to open up. And some of you have kind of like reached that point. I'm also seeing for my Virgos who are in a relationship, there could be key things that you're trying to evaluate about your relationship just in general. And you could know what needs to happen for the sake of the connection, but your person could be so stuck in their ways or rigid or just holding on to certain grudges. It doesn't seem like you guys could maybe get past this. Okay, for a lot of you, you could be waiting for the right person to come in 
but you're in this weird in between state of like okay i'm still holding on to an x because we have time on it but i also want something new and better but i'm scared to open up so it's a tricky space some of you are in now let's look at career and finance i have the page of wands the will of fortune and the knight of swords so career wise again you could feel very inspired this could be a conversation you end up having or something you see on social media on youtube uh, that may give you like this dose of excitement or this willingness to to really act on your creative ideas or take action in general with the will of fortune and the knight of swords expect the unexpected there could be some unexpected events that transpire, but in a good nature, because the Wheel of Fortune is upright. It's just with any new stuff that you are trying to accomplish career-wise, make sure you're not rushing into this process and ignoring some key things that may have to be addressed or that may have to be dealt with in order for a business plan to actually move forward smoothly. Virgos. Okay, and then the advice, we have the Five of Cups, the Nine of Swords, and the Eight of Swords. So the advice is to not be in the past so much emotionally that you're refusing to notice the opportunities you have in the current moment to change your situation around. When you get too consumed in your past, you're ignoring the present moment and just kind of essentially staying frozen in time. And that only happens when we die. So... Anytime you're doing this in your living life or while you're living, you're going backwards. So anything that's constantly keeping you in a state of just staying focused on the past and things you can't really do anything about, you're doing yourself a big disadvantage, especially during this time frame. Okay, work with your current situation to change your future, to look different than the past. Also with the Nine of Swords and the Eight of Swords, being aware of how anxiety could be at the root of certain decisions that you're making. So being careful of making any permanent decision during this time frame based off of anxiety or based off of being in your head because then it's not logical. And then at that point, you could be making a decision that's setting you back even further just because you allowed emotions or anxiety to control you. Okay, what is the final card for my Virgos? What is the message you need to hear for the next 72 hours? So we have the Bone Collector. So this is the first page. So it says you are whole and have everything you need within. When the bone collector appears, she's asking you to, to look closely at your circumstances to see if you're fully present or reacting out of past conditioning and unconscious expectations. Whenever we're wounded, especially when we're young, it is as if something essential is stolen from us. We adapt and accept a version of truth that sets us up to behave a certain way in the future when faced with a situation similar to the original event. What we know about ourselves thus becomes influenced by a perception of limitation. You may feel unworthy or without courage. You may see yourself as flawed or unlovable or expect to be criticized. The bone collector reminds you that the truth is that you are a powerful being with limitless possibilities. She has kept safe what was stolen from you in the wounding and is here for you to reclaim it now. You have everything you believe you lack. The bone collector is your inner resource. Act as if you have what you need and you'll find you have it after all. Anything is possible with awareness. The wounds of the past will not define you. So this goes right back into what I was saying with these cards here. So I'm not going to drag it. But with the Bone Collector being here, again, this is a reminder that you are not your past conditionings. Um, the only thing that makes it a part of you is the belief that you think that those events make up who you are. Okay. And if they are going to make up who you are, they need to be... Those events need to be making you up in a way where you're having wisdom from those events and not carrying on the trauma and identifying that as you. 
But this is what I see. I do wish you the best of luck and I will talk to you in the next one.